This is a typical roof used on a national beehive in the UK. It's just a wooden bottom here with a metal, thin metal sheet on top. It's either aluminium or usually it's galvanised. This, this one, the galvanisation is failing a bit, so there's a bit of rust on it. But that's it. It's not really an ideal so solution for many reasons. One is flat roofs and 30 inches of rain a year are not really a very good combination. But they are much more convenient to, 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 to handle than having a pent roof with a, with a bend in. So th that's what tends to be used. The other feature of these things is that they're almost always made with a box joint here. So that's a series of tessellations cut in here and similarly in the corresponding piece of wood and then it snaps together. That saves any jointing uh, wood on the inside and any battens. But it causes water to almost always ingress in here. So if you, if you look inside one of these things, they almost always have water ingress. There's a quick and easy solution though. And that is if you take a bit of a uh, roofing sheet which is a very thin steel used for, for roofing um, cabins and, well, in fact, roofing big uh, big box stores. And if you take that and put it on the corner like that, then you stop all the water going in. The, the water mostly goes in by capillary action. So it rains on here and the, the, the roof only comes down to here. So there's nothing to protect this. But if you put a piece on like this, it looks a bit ugly, but it will keep out most of the rain. That's what I'm doing at the moment, is putting on these corner pieces uh, just to stop the rain from ingressing in via this uh, box joint. The, uh, the way I normally do these is uh, just put a little hole in here with a, a punch. It's, it's, it's a lot easier to punch this stuff than it is to drill it. It's very thin steel, uh, but with a, a good galvanising coat on it lasts for 20-30 oh, years, maybe more. So you can easily punch holes in like that. If you're drilling it with a drilling machine, then you must be absolutely certain to clamp it down, otherwise it can tend to spin when the drill goes through and that will, if your hand's in the way, it will cut your hand very, very badly. So that's what I do, is just bend these, cut these things from roofing sheets, bend them so they're square like that, and then hold them in with two screws and then put the uh, lid back on. And when I put the lid back on, the, uh, I always bend out the sides here because that is a, it, it means any water coming on will drip off the side of the hive and there's there's no thin gap here for capillary action to soak the water up. So that, I, I found, it is a, a, a great improvement for these hives. Uh, screwing here. These, these are actually one inch, which is really a bit long for what I'm doing here. But it's what I happen to have that has a head which is consistent with the hole punch. You want, you want, a half inch would be fine here but I don't have any half inch screws to have a small enough head on. So they pull through uh, and then just as best you can drift the roofing sheet down and then secure it with a screw on the other side. Just like that. So that's one done, then repeat that on all the four corners and then put the lid back on and, and we're basically done. Completed uh, lid, it looks a bit odd having these things extending down here but in my experience they will keep the water out. I've never ever taken one of these, these uh, eyes which has the box joints here and found it dry in the lid, they almost always leak so I, I almost always get around to having to put these things on which don't look particularly pleasant but they, they do seem to work and also uh, I've kept a big gap here so there's no chance of capillary action. Any any rain that gets in here, or what, most of it's going to fall down, but anything that gets blown up, when the next wind comes and it's a dry day, it will dry it. So you, I, I try and have as much drying ability as possible by leaving leaving gaps. Uh, it's really the opposite of what you taught, but um, it, it works better than, than trying to make it all tight and uh, it just doesn't dry. This is the second roof I've done. This is a more modern one and they've been using uh, OSB board on the top. When I brought this up from the Ives it was that wet that it weighed I'd say about twice or maybe three times as much as the, the other board because this thing was just completely saturated with water but having got it, left it in the house for two or three days it, it dried out quite, quite remarkably. It's still a little bit damp but uh, nothing like what it was. So you can recover 
even with OSB, I think things do get wet, but uh, this should stop any future ingress of water. So this is one of the hives that doesn't have the protection on the corners. So I'm hoping, hoping I can transfer this. Yeah, more bees than I could really like there. But we've got the, the new hive on, new hive lid on. I haven't got stung. This hive design is a little bit better. It's using a essentially uh, pretty much like a tongue and groove type fitting. But this normally the, the better ones are where you've got this board coming here with a groove in, and then this one with a tongue offset from the centre, so as it slides in there, that provides quite good. This one, we've got that jet that uh, joint there. It just allows water to come in, and this you can see that the uh, the hive is quite wet inside. All the wood feels wet, and it's heavy. That's a good indication that it's. Uh, the water's been getting in so I'll, again I'll put some more fins on the side of that and also there's been some damage here so really that needs repairing it's the actual uh, metal roof here is broken it's a very thin sheet that one but anyway it's off and uh, yeah well, I've already covered this one with a bit of uh, uh, resin but uh, it hasn't worked very well so maybe that needs a new, new piece of, of steel second roof and you can see here how wet it is around these box joints on, on uh, both corners, well all four corners. So it also the, the lift feels heavy and the, the water once it gets in there it tends to migrate all over the place. Uh, so really the, these box joints here are just not suitable for, for outdoor hives. They, they, they work fine on indoor stuff but uh, on in, uh, anything that's outdoors the water tends to get in. These are some of the other hives where I've used the uh, corner uh, covering technique. Uh, they're, they're generally dry inside. So I, I think it's, it's certainly here at this latitude and this sort of weather where we have 30 inches of soil rain per year, having the uh, covers over those box joints, box joints makes a big difference to the winter conditions of, of the hive and dampness inside a hive will kill the bees very quickly. So you don't want them damp inside at all, you want it to be as dry as it's as possible really.